everyone uh, this is our video of um, looking at? <laughs> uh, got, got a bunch of people <laughs> looking in the window as we're trying to do this video oh okay this is our latest video of uh, the last few days on the Grand Union yeah and um, we've hung around here we was due to actually get on to the uh, Neen. River, River Neen, but um, or Nenny, or yeah, we got friends in the area, yeah, um, who are in a holiday cottage at the moment, Ian and Linda. So, yeah. we want to catch up with those. They've just bought a narrowboat, and um, the Blissworth Festival, yeah, as uh, was on now. It just seems like the last um, month or so, there's been various festivals, and we either arrived the weekend too late or we'd left and where we had been had the following one and then, weekend yeah. after we'd left there was a festival so <laughs> yeah we were missing them we was like yeah, a so, week behind yes. or a week in front yeah so we? we got to blissworth and hung about for four or five days for the yeah. festival which was well was lovely which was well worth it well day two of the blissworth festival yeah. uh, we went there yesterday uh, wind horrendous 50 mile an hour gusts so for safety reasons, most of the traders on the main field um, didn't set up the stalls, so that was quite empty. But today? Uh, so today, been informed uh, they've all turned out. Yep. So now go in there to have a look. Let's see when we get there. Well, there's all the traders all lined up. We'll take a walk down there in a little while. Yeah, yeah we're hoping to bump into another two uh, vloggers, but we don't know where they'll be. <laughs> Sorry. Well, this field yesterday uh, was virtually empty, so now that the wind's dropped, big difference. Yeah, so while we was there, we was contacted um, by Mark and Julie Weir from Weir on the Move. Mm -hmm. um, so we uh, tied up with those, met those guys. Always nice to see those. Yeah. Now, where could they be? Where could they be? <sighs> this super um. cool. I spotted you. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's no guessing what they sell. heading we're heading to the beer tent we found a beer tent now it's beer I've got a sneaky feeling it's all lagers but we shall find out when yeah. we get there well that turned out good in the end the weather held out had a fantastic pint didn't do the review while I was there uh, very busy around the beer tent I was a little bit self-conscious just got fish and chips from the chip van so now walking back for a little bit of dinner and hopefully later on this evening, back to the wharf for some more beer and live music. Yeah, so we moved on to um, Gate and Junction um, to start our journey onto the Northampton Arm. Yeah, and that. The GU then, or the Grand Union then changes from the wide um, double locks to the single narrow lock. So if you've got a wide beam um, boat, you're not going to be able to take it down um, that Northampton arm and get onto the Neen. Yeah. 
Yeah, so we've just got to Gate and Junction and you can see just behind me there, there's two boats already on the water point. So a sort of 20 minutes, half an hour of fill, probably get a, about an hour before we can get on there. And then we're going that way. Or no, yeah, that way. the Northampton Arm. Uncharted waters for us. I think we've got 17 locks to do, which we're not going to do today. It's sort of half two, we'll get moored up and um, set off in the morning. Well, we're at lock 11 on the uh, Northampton flight going down. It's been a, <laughs> an eventful morning. Uh, come down last night about uh, eight o'clock checked all the locks were all set and okay and it was all set in our favor all the locks were full got there this morning Harper State and the top two pound three pounds were drained right down now um, some of you may have heard of Leon the helpful homeless man who lives in the tent at the top lock he informed me that um, a boat come through late uh, last night and left the paddles open, hence why everything was drained down. Yeah, so had uh, Leon not been with us, uh, the, the idea was I'd have got a lot more footage, video footage through these locks, and I was gonna get the drone out because the, the wind has dropped, and we've got 17 locks in uh, uh, sort of fairly, fairly short pounds, only a couple of hundred yards each pound, so that would have made for some nice footage, but I will have to do that on the return journey. So we did the 17 locks. Yeah, pretty uneventful um, yeah. 17 locks. Had a little bit of help from um, Leon, I think. Uh, um, to it to number 11, I think. It yeah, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Though those of you who have been down, they've probably bumped into Leon. He's a homeless guy, and I think he's actually, from what he was telling me, he's actually been in his tent around that flight of locks for the last 12 years. Yeah, yeah so he know, knows it pretty well. Um, he'll help you out if you need it and he'll help you out if you don't need it uh, yeah so cheers Leon Dev, Dev's got the giggles again yeah so the re reason we've um, decided to leave the Grand Union and get on to the Neen is because we then want to get to Peterborough and then uh, go through stand ground lock get onto the middle level navigations to get as near to our old hometown of Kings Lynn. We've uh, got some loose ends to tie up from our house sale um, last year, but we're not gonna go into that now, so no. we'll cover that in a, in a future vlog. Yeah. Right, I've just seen a, 
a sign that tells me that this barrage gate operates automatically. If I hear the siren, I need to get out of the way. So providing the siren doesn't sound while I'm going through there, I should be okay. Well, we got through okay, no alarms. Um, now supposedly we can moor in this area. Although, as you can see, we're going to have no arm co. It's all going to be nice, nice reedy banks and just basically more wherever we can. Six o'clock, sun's still shining nicely. So, uh, as long as we get moored up for gin o'clock, we should be okay. to get nice moorings for the night at the Washlands 48 hour visitor moorings. Yeah, so 48 hours and uh, we're on a floating pontoon so should water levels rise, we'll be okay. Yeah, we got to the end of the pontoon just in case anybody else decides to come in. Yeah, so some fantastic views all across there, all open. And our boat is just there. Well, that's our stay at uh, Washlands Moorings over with. Been here two days. Uh, rained all day yesterday. Sun's now out, as you can see. So I'm squinting. And I'm just going to go have a look at the lock, make sure nobody's on the lock landing, and then we'll set off. Right, this is going to be interesting. I've just... Uh, the, the lock is there. And uh, we've got a slight obstruction. I'll show you. Now, as cute as they are, I'm not very confident around horses. So I think I'm going to be staying on the boat and Deb's going to be doing the locks. Yeah, so me being the experienced one, I um, had to actually teach Mark how to do a guillotine lock. Yeah, because we'd done those before when we'd uh, hired and boats. We. Okay, we. Debbie had done uh, the electrically operated guillotine locks um, when we'd hired a boat from Fox's Narrowboat in March. Yeah. Yeah, and how many did we do of those? Two. One. Oh, was it one? Yeah, so... No, we did two on the way there, on the way back. All oh, right, so the same. <laughs> same that like we done... We still two. we done one lock twice, so, which makes <laughs> Deb the expert. Yeah. <laughs> Now Deb's done these guillotine locks before when we have hired boats, but I've never done them. So I'm going to get some tuition and Deb will do this first one and then at least I can do any future ones. Yeah, so just like any other canal lock, uh, the upper gates, uh, standard gates with uh, gate paddles. But the lower gate is uh, an electrically operated uh, guillotine and Deb's now going to demonstrate how to do it. So basically what we've got to do is close close this guillotine. An yeah, an abloy key. Now I've never looked in here before. Okay. Now that gate is lowering, which would be the same as lowering the, uh, the paddles on a normal gate. Once that is lowered, we can then go up that end and open the gate paddles uh, to fill the lock. Now once the lock's full and we go in there uh, to empty the lock, uh, similar, similar procedure with the controls there but what happens is the lock gate will raise by approximately 10 inches um, and that's the same effect as you opening the gate paddle so that will raise by 10 inches uh, the water will drain out under that uh, we will then drop down to the same level as the water um, On the other side. I was going to say the lower pound it's not really a pound it's the lower section of the river once that happens the gate will rise fully and we can go through close now 
Yeah, so the that's fully closed. Um, so we're now going to fill the lock. lock. Um, there were some horses there, um, as you can see in the video. And Mark doesn't do horses. Um, he's as bad with horses as I am with cows. So it was a bit of a quandary, but we got through it. Yeah, as you'll see. Right now, we've got a good 20 feet between me and these beasties. So I'm going to make a dash for it. I haven't seen them. <laughs> Got past them. Now they say all dogs can swim, but yesterday we found out Alfie's uh, swimming abilities are very, very limited. Um, you see behind me the duckweed, while Alfie thought that was a nicely mown lawn. Just went running to run straight across the duckweed, disappeared. Luckily he was still on his lead, so I dragged him out, but um, his doggy paddle needs a lot of um, practice. So Deb has now uh, drained the the lock and the gate should now rise albeit slowly same as the locks on the canals we have warnings of where the sill is so you just got to make sure the uh, end of your boat isn't in that area it was Western Favel lock So for the uninitiated, how easy would you say those uh, locks are? They're easy, yeah. Uh, you just keep your wits about you. Um, the actual guillotine gates, there's a plaque there behind, I didn't see it first off, but there is a plaque there that tells you exactly what to do. So, um, you know, you just, yeah, take your time and one step at a time, it's, it's, it's easy. Yeah. I'll, I'll have a go at the next one. Yeah, and I'll film it. Yeah, so now coming through, um, thanks Alfie. Now coming through Northampton Boat Club area, where all their moorings are. And a few narrow boats, a lot of cruisers. It's a, what day is it? Thursday. It's a Thursday, yeah, so not much activity. I suppose it gets busy around here at weekends. So, so, yeah. Yeah, so I think that covers it for this little video not really much more to say about no. about this we've got some real real uh, beautiful footage yeah. of our trip down the Neen yeah. so we're, we're looking yeah. forward to editing those videos together for yeah. you guys that'll be lovely yeah yeah, yeah. so if you uh, enjoyed the vid give it a thumbs up do that again oh no yeah yeah, yeah. so if you enjoyed this video give us a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed hit the subscribe button and if you want <laughs> I don't know what's yeah. going on here okay. and if you want um, future notifications press the bell icon <laughs> this has taken about eight takes to get this but uh, anyway bit, yeah, yeah yeah like bell subscribe thumbs, subscribe <laughs> and your comments yeah, yeah. don't forget oh, your comments, comments. Yeah. love your comments yeah, yeah. and we haven't been drinking it's no. only it's only quarter to twelve <laughs> Okay, bye.